Hello and welcome to Why Visit Guadalajara channel, where I not only give you reasons to visit it, but to love it. So if you're coming to the city for the first time, you're probably spending hours on internet searching for the places where to go, places to visit. So I'll probably save you a little bit of time and tell that on the top of all lists that you will find, there will be Museum Cabañas. First thing that you have to know about this place, it is UNESCO's World Heritage. So let's get inside and check out why did it became one. And don't forget to wear a mask. But before getting inside, we have to buy tickets. So we got our tickets and because it is Tuesday, we didn't have to pay any money for it. Regularly, cost of entrance is 80 pesos. And for kids below 12 years, it is 30 pesos. So let's get inside. Hospicio Cabañas was built in the beginning of 19th century, year 1810 to be exact. The reason of its construction was the desire of this bishop, whose name is Juan Cruz Ruiz de Cabañas, to provide shelter and care for disadvantaged people, such as orphans. This building is more than 200 years old, so we can only imagine all those things that it lived through. But I'll try to give you the long story very, very short. 1810, the war for independence started here in Mexico. So shortly it was occupied by soldiers as barracks. Hopefully when the war was over, it became the shelter place for orphans. Another unfortunate event took part in 1875 when there was a strong earthquake in Guadalajara and the building got damaged. Year 1910, revolution begins. And what you think? The building again is occupied and serves as barracks. But uh, despite all those unfortunate events, this facility served as orphanage up till 1980. The building itself is considered one of the main examples of neoclassical architecture in Mexico. This construction occupies the territory of more than 23,000 square meters. Just imagine. But Despite its enormous size, the uniqueness of this building mainly relates to the simplicity of its construction. The harmony that was achieved between the massive structure, like these columns, and between open, huge outdoor space. And I guess it is worth mentioning that the building counts with 126 rooms, 72 hallways, and 23 patios. Impressive, right? But the cherry on top is hidden behind me in the chapel. In late 1930s, it was painted by one of the greatest Mexican muralists, Jose Clemente Orozco. It has about 57 frescoes inside. Most of the paintings here are showing some parts of history of Mexico, such as conquest, religion or oppression. For example, on this one we can see that bishop that I was mentioning before, the founder of this beautiful building. But the most significant and probably the most famous work of Orozco is located in the chapel's dome, El Hombre de Fuego, or the Man of Fire. We could finish now, but there are still some things to see. The actual museum. Right now we are at uh, one of the halls uh, with the exposition. The name of it is Vivan las Mujeres, meaning uh, lonely women. It is a great exposition, very personal because I'm a woman. Probably when you see this video it won't be here anymore, but you have to pay attention because this exposition may travel. It has been to Argentina, Nicaragua, Spain and Uruguay already, so maybe one day it will be in your city. 
This exposition is temporal and they are constantly changing. I will advise you to check out the Instagram page of uh, this museum and so you can see what is the current exposition in the museum. Normally, there are a few kinds of expositions in the museum, the temporal and the permanent. One of the permanent is about the history of the building and Orozco. But right now, due to the pandemic, this one is closed, unfortunately. Apart from the museum, as well, there is a library. It is very small, but um, there is a lot of books, mainly about art, and you can easily enter and take some book and look at it, whatever you may like. And the great thing is that there is a small uh, coffee shop inside of the museum so we can, can get some coffee and just relax for a moment and then continue on exploring the building. And uh, the last thing that I have to tell you is uh, probably the name of the architect. His name is Manuel Tolsa. He was born in Spain. He did various uh, buildings here in Mexico, not only in Guadalajara. It's said that he was inspired by a few buildings that are located in Europe. One in Paris, it is Palace for Invalid People, and another one in uh, Madrid, which is the Royal Palace. Well, you can see them and compare whether they look alike or not. <laughs> and that's all, folks. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Visit our Instagram page with the same name, why visit GDL. And if you have any questions, any recommendations, please leave them below. Adios!